Today we're going to look at how we can go ahead and do some bandwidth limiting on our Cisco ASA firewalls. One of the common questions that we get asked is how could I go ahead and use my Cisco ASA firewall to limit how much bandwidth my, maybe my guest users are actually occupying on the internet. So we're going to go through a quick example of how to do that. It's very simple. Just need to go ahead and get into the configuration and then we're actually going to go ahead and take a look at the firewall and then we need to look at the service policy rules and this is where we're going to go ahead and work the magic. We're going to go ahead and add a new service policy rule and if you read through this what it's saying is that you can either go ahead and apply a service policy that applies to all of the interfaces which would be a global one or you could do one per interface but only one. We're going to go ahead and use that for our example and what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to an interface that we call inside. Okay, so on this one we'll go ahead and have this be an inside policy. I'm going to go ahead and say next. And how we're going to define this is based on source and destination IP addresses. So we're going to go ahead and actually build an ACL as we do this. So our source that we're going to do is going to be everything that comes from our guest network. Now if we go ahead and scroll down through our list we actually have got one of our networks here which happens to be the 10.1.103 network. This is our guest network. So that's going to be anything that is coming uh, from that address range we know is actually part of our guest network. So that's the ones that we've been defining. And what we're going to do is apply this for anything going to any other address. So, whoops, sorry, hit the wrong button there. I meant to actually have my destination here. B, B, N, E. There we go. All right. Now we're good. Uh, we actually have some other options that we could take a look at. Uh, we could go ahead and, and define different time ranges. So if you wanted this rule to only work uh, during the day, for example, and then uh, not be valid at night, that's something that you certainly could do. Then we're going to go come in, and this is where we actually do most of it. It's all right here underneath the QoS. So what we need to do is we need to enable policing. And we can actually go ahead and have two different things. So if you think about um, this, since it's being applied to the inside interface, anything going into that would be an input. So this would be the direction of being sent out to the internet. So what we could do is we could limit this to being what their upload is. And maybe we want this to be like three megs. So we can come in here and just put in three million. And maybe we want them to be able to download, meaning when it's leaving the inside interface, in other words, heading towards the client, this is where we'd actually go ahead and have it be maybe 5 meg, for example. And then if you look through there, you can see how the conform action would be to transmit, but the exceed action would be to drop. And then uh, for Ethernet, I'd leave the burst size sitting at 1500 bytes. That's a nice way to do it. And then say finish, and then you'll say apply. And I've actually got mine set up such that I preview what all the commands are. And you can see, here's what it is. It's actually very simple. It goes ahead, builds yourself uh, an access list defining what the source is going to anywhere. We're going to have a policy map that's referencing an inside class map and then there you are. You have two different policers. One for input at 3 meg, one for output at 5 meg and it gets done and that's it. Hope that helps. Thanks.